My next guest is Congressman Steve King of Iowa. With all the constitutional issues associated with Obamacare, the irresponsible price tag of the legislation is too often left out of the debate. If the events of the past year have taught us anything, it's that Washington must seriously address out-of-control spending, and that's why I'm happy to welcome Congressman Steve King to discuss the cost in dollars and in freedom. Congressman King, welcome. Thanks for having me on. So our, uh, our old it, road warrior from, uh, from Iowa. Well, Congressman, look, you have been out front on this, uh, as Michelle has, and, and the, the conservative members of the House from the, front, from the very beginning, because before we even had the true dollar cost associated with it, you knew the fundamental cost in freedom that this represented. Well, yes, and, and, and when I look at this, this whole picture, I mean, you've seen the expansion of the nanny state here in America and the administration reaching into every aspect of our lives. Uh, Obamacare peace addresses about one-sixth of our economy and a great big chunk of our American freedom and liberty. And I define it this way, that the most sovereign thing that we have is our own soul. And the federal government hasn't yet figured out how to nationalize our soul. They did figure out how to nationalize some investment banks, some insurance companies, some car companies, and our skin and everything inside of it. That's Obamacare. It's the nationalization, it's the government takeover of our sovereign responsibility to manage our own health. And then not only do they take over our skin and everything inside it, but they put a 10% tax on the outside if you go to the tanning salon, Tony. It was really, that was a reach. Well, I try to stay away from the tanning <laughs> salon. I got enough grass to cut, I get a good tan anyway. But uh, Congress, let me ask you, they, 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 they try to, to stay away from the cost associated with, with uh, Obamacare. We saw the prices uh, already doubled. It's uh, $1.7 trillion now that it's estimated to cost and it hasn't even gone into effect. But I want to show a slide from the Republican Study uh, Committee that shows the, the, the cost associated in terms of jobs uh, and how many jobs this is actually going to cost the American economy. If we can go to that slide uh, there on the screen. We were told that this was going to create uh, jobs, uh, but what we're now seeing is a projection that this is going to, uh, to cost uh, the CBO said that this is, this is going to cost us 800,000 jobs uh, it, when this is put into place. So not only is it not creating the number of jobs they said, it's doing the exact opposite at a time when our economy is still sputtering. And Tony, that's, that's a count number of jobs. And so when you look deeper into it too and you think about the generations that raise another generation of doctors and nurses, healthcare providers that are being also severed from this, the people that are early stepping forward to retirement that are telling their children don't go into the healthcare industry because the government's taken it over and you can no longer have a doctor-patient right. relationship. And we're going to talk about that later in the program too. Our culture as yes. well as just the cost of jobs. I, I want to ask you this question. This actually came uh, from Ann in your district in Iowa. I live in rural Iowa in Congressman Steve King's new district. I have concerns with being able to keep my family doctor with the implementation of the new health care bill. I have had a history of some serious health problems. I have always taken care of myself, and yet I ended up with some pretty serious health issues a few years ago. I trust my family doctor. He is most familiar with everything that has happened to me. In our area where we live, he is probably the best doctor of those available. I'm concerned that when this law is fully implemented, I will just be assigned to a doctor of the government's choosing, or the new law may be so burdensome that my doctor won't be able to continue to practice medicine. I'm also concerned that since I have cost so much already because of my past health care problems that if I have problems in the future the government will decide that I have used too many resources and I will not be allowed to use the health care system because of my past. I am quite concerned. What can you tell someone like me? Can this law be stopped? Can it be changed? Well to Ann and to everybody in America I absolutely believe this law will be repealed. I have worked on it intensively for the last two years. I turned my focus to the presidential race over the last year to ensure that the number one plank in the platform of the next president of the United States is the full 100% repeal of Obamacare. And every presidential candidate has either signed or endorsed my pledge in one way or another. And since I believe it can happen. But, Tony, I think the thing we're not thinking about is if, if the Supreme Court, as they're meeting tomorrow, actually, again, if they should rule that Obamacare is unconstitutional, we might see American activists breathe a sigh of relief and not go to the polls and not work. But think what happens. If the Congress should pass the repeal of Obamacare, the President could, re could veto it and would veto it. 
but he would also be in a position to make one or two or maybe even three appointments to the Supreme Court in his second term, in which case Obamacare could come before that court and have, it, have a decision that could find it unconstitutional in June reversed in the next term of a President Obama. That's why it's critical that we vote him out of office and vote someone in whose number one plank is the repeal of Obamacare. Well, beyond just this particular issue of health care, we have seen at you know, how this administration will ignore the Constitution and stretch it as if it were silly putty uh, to accomplish their goals and objectives. And the president himself uh, in Seoul, Korea, uh, made very clear that uh, he would be more flexible after this next election. So th the threat to our freedom does not go away uh, just with Obamacare. It's something that we're going to have to be vigilant about watching very carefully. L let me ask you this, Congressman King. Um, you, you've been involved in the presidential. You've gotten a commitment from member, many of the uh, from the presidential Republican candidates. What about your colleagues in Congress in the House of Representatives? Is there the uh, really the, the backbone to take this on? I've been concerned over the last couple of years, and I remember the recommendation, the marching orders that came out the day after Obamacare was passed. It was repeal and replace. Right. I started the effort to pull out the words and replace because there's nothing to replace unless you first repeal. I'm happy to do the replacement components of this, but not in the same discussion. And I'm worried that there are members, and even Republicans, that want to repeal the most egregious aspects of Obamacare, but would like to keep a couple of components there and not to have the political fight. I want it all out. And I think we have to say this over and over again. But every the House passed the full repeal of Obamacare early on in this 112th Congress. And the Senate took it up. And every Republican in the Senate voted to repeal Obamacare. We must continue down that same path and make clear that it isn't about repealing part. It's about repealing right. it all. It is a malignant tumor that is now metastasizing, and it feeds on American liberty. And it must all be pulled out by the roots so there's not a vestige of it left behind. That's my mission. That's your mission. That's the mission to preserve and protect American liberty. Congressman Steve King, I take you at your word because I know you'll do it. We'll do it. Thanks, thanks, for, your, thanks for your leadership. Well, folks, uh, members like Congressman Steve King, Michelle Bachman, and others need your help. They need your support to make this happen. So I want to encourage you to take these action steps. Make sure you have a, a pen, a piece of paper where you can write these down. Now, we saw just recently where the administration mandated insurance uh, coverage for contraception, even for religious organizations. Now, there was a big outcry over this, but this is simply uh, really the precursor of what's to come under Obamacare. The, they're taking... Uh, public comment at present. You can go to the website frcaction.org slash comment and you can post your comment that will go to the government in protest to this mandate. We need to be prepared every time this raises its ugly head we need to speak out.